Hello and thanks for checking out this video. First, a quick introduction. If you have any questions about this research paper, don't hesitate to contact your professor, David Knackley. Email him at dnackley at mvcc.edu or visit his office during office hours in Payne Hall, room 328. My name is Jocelyn Ireland. I'm a librarian on the Utica campus of MVCC. Typically, you'll find me in the Learning Commons or the Utica campus MVCC library. Like all librarians, I'm available to help you with research, formatting your papers, setting up a tutor appointment, or with citations. The purpose of this video is how to find quality sources for your research paper assignment. The big takeaways will be why you should use the library website for college research and effective search strategies to find scholarly sources. And if there's one thing I hope you take away from watching this is to speak up if you're struggling. There's a support network at MVCC to help you. They're writing tutors to help you with writing, advisors to help you overcome personal challenges, librarians to help you with research and citation, and your professor, of course. We all want you to succeed. Let's move on to the assignment. Be sure to look over the assignment description carefully to find out what the expectations are of Mr. Knackley. Here is a brief overview. This is an 8 to 10 page research paper on an American writer who is writing between 1451 to 1900. You do need to get your topic approved by Mr. Knackley before a rough draft. You have to include bibliographical information, background about what was going on during the time period, the style and genre your writer was typically working with, and what works they are most well known for, as well as themes and what the work is re in reaction to, and why you chose this person. You have to use at least four credible sources for this paper, and you have to use at least some scholarly sources. This means books or journal articles from the library website. Any questions about expectations should be directed to your professor, Mr. Neckley. Let's move on to researching. Your instructor is expecting you to use the library website to find most, if not all, of your sources. But why? Why not just use Google? The most obvious reason not to solely use Google is because there's a lot of crap out there. It can be hard to sift through all the junk to find the real treasure. And even if you're great at evaluating and identifying credible sources, not all information is available online, particularly not scholarly research. So if you're only using Google to do academic research, you're really limiting yourself. The open web has a lot of information, but it doesn't have everything. So let's jump into researching for this paper. If you don't know who you want to write about, it's totally fine to get some ideas from Google. Look up writers and the American dream. Just keep in mind that the person has to be really famous in order for a su substantial amount of research to be written about them. If you pick someone not very well known, you're going to have a hard time finding scholarly sources about that person. If there's a writer you really liked already discussed in class, consider that person too. Once you have the person you want to write about, go to the library website. From the college homepage, go to academics and then libraries. A good place to start your research is the main search box on the library homepage. Let's say you're interested in researching Ben Franklin. Just put your topic in the search box, press enter. Please note that spelling does matter when you're searching on the library website. If you don't spell something correctly, you may get zero results, or at least nothing relevant. Let's look at our results. So if you're searching for a writer very well known, then you may get an encyclopedia article as your first result. Here you'll have the basics of who, what, and where about your person. Remember, your paper isn't just a biography, though. This is just one piece of the mosaic that your paper will become. As you read your sources, take a critical look. Ask yourself, why was this person important? What kind of impact did this person have? What led this person to write about what they did? And what kind of message did the writer want to get across to the audience? Write down your questions and seek sources to answer those questions. Uh, one source will not answer all of your question. Each source is like a piece to the puzzle. Let's see what other sources are search retrieved. When doing a research paper, it's a good idea to use a variety of material types. We've already seen an encyclopedia article, which is a type of reference entry, and it gives a broad overview about a topic. Books will provide more context and detail. Peer review articles, also called scholarly articles, 
tend to be research-based, focused on something very specific, and they've gone through a rigorous publication process. When you narrow your results to books, you'll retrieve both online and physical book records. Physical book records will include what library they're available at and a call number. That's the location on the shelf. A librarian is always happy to help you track down the book, so don't hesitate to ask. If you sign in to your library account, you can also put the item on hold. You log into your library account with your M number and your six digit PIN number. This is the same login information you use to log into SIRS. So I've logged in and now I could place a hold. It'll ask you which library you want to pick it up and then you submit your request. If the item is already available, it should be available at the circulation desk that day or the next. There are also audiovisual resources, which are usually videos that you could get online or might be available as a physical copy in the library. If you're having trouble finding sources, a librarian is happy to help. And we can also get sources sent to us from another library through interlibrary loan. After you've got some basics about your person, it's a good idea to add some more keywords to your search. Connect keywords in a meaningful way with and or or. Stay simple and use the same type of vocabulary scholars would use when they're writing about the person. You can also put quotation marks around phrases. I'm going to narrow my results to peer-reviewed journal articles. So these would all count as a scholarly source. Once you find something that's interesting to you, select Available Online. If you scroll down, most records will have a description, which is a summary of the article. So it'll give you a better idea if this is something worth looking into further. And if it's available online, it'll have a list of databases that are holding this article. Select one of the databases. Now, if you're off campus, it will ask you to sign in. This is a different login than what we used earlier to sign into the library account. When you're accessing articles from off campus, you have to sign in with your MVCC username and password, which is usually your first initial, last name, day of birth, and last four digits of your social or M number. It's the same login you used for campus Wi-Fi, your student email, or Blackboard. And different databases are going to look different. This is a EBSCO database, so all EBSCO databases usually look the same. They'll have a PDF full text link to link you to the full article. This is an example of a different database called Academic One File. It's owned by a different company called Gale. And in this database, it just took us straight to the full text. There is no PDF full text link. This is the article itself. So your view may look different depending on what article you're looking at. No matter what database you're using though, they should have an option to download your article, print it off, save it to a Google account, email it to yourself, and create a citation. I'm going to select the citation button. Since we're in English class, we have to use MLA style, so I'm going to scroll down. So if you think you might use this article for your paper, make sure you save your citation. You're not going to want to try to track down the citation at the last minute or try to recreate this yourself. And just keep in mind that these citations are made by a machine, so it's only as good as whatever data the machine was given. So sometimes there's errors. You always have to proofread these to make sure they were done correctly. And a librarian or a writing tutor are happy to help you do that. It's a good idea to check out other databases because different databases are going to provide access to different journals. This search box provides access to a lot of different databases, but it doesn't search everything. So it's a good idea to go to the A to Z databases button to expand your search. Academic One File, Academic Search Complete, those are both very good databases that cover a wide variety of topics. I'm going to demonstrate using a history database because for this paper, you're going to need to explore historical context. So I'm going to use this All Subjects drop-down menu, select History, and these databases specialize in historical topics. I'm going to select U.S. History and Context. 
So there's a lot of strategies you could use to find out what was going on during your, the time period that your writer was active. You could put in the era or decade that your writer was particularly active. Play around their search terms. My person just happens to be a writer, a scientist, and an inventor. So I could certainly talk a lot about his contribution to technology of his era. Thanks for bearing with me to the end. You should have learned some helpful strategies to research on the library website. Just know there are real people at NVCC available to help, whether it's about how an MLA paper should look, how to format your citations, or if you're having trouble finding good sources. Hang in there and good luck with your project.